Just before race two, Gerald Reddington was allowed some testing time in the No Surge Nico's car. Uh, no Surge came on board to help Reddington get back into a stock car despite the injuries he obtained over the offseason in a jet ski racing accident. Tyler Faber was on the box for his test laps. It's nice to have you back, Gerald. We really did miss you. And I know you're going to be in for a challenge. Uh, challenge steering with prosthetics, but uh, we all think you can do it. We're all rooting for you. Second grid of 46 cars waiting on the green flag. And there it is, Freddy Munoz in the O2 is going to get him going. He got his first career pole in that mug machine. The 95.3 Bob FM car of Vance Caldwell, a local entry out of Connecticut, starts on outside pole, falls to third already. But if qualifying is anything to say of his driving ability, he'll be one to watch. Is that Sam Curtis blowing up already? A real shame for the 66 team. They they were looking pretty strong this weekend. Qualified that car fourth, and a but a piston failure is going to take the 66 out of the race very early. Pulls it down out of harm's way, and he'll need a push back to the pits as soon as he gets to an emergency gate. Lucas Knight and Caitlin Sang begin this race as they ended Watkins Glen side by side. Lucas Knight. Uh, moving a little bit forward while well, Tseng uh, struggling a little bit, didn't have a lot of drafting help down the front straight. Of course with this track acting a bit like a super speedway and everyone racing so close together, there's going to need to be a lot of give and take to avoid calamities. Of course as we get closer to the end of the race, uh, the, the giving bit's going to go away, but uh, until then... Uh, Survival is going to be necessary. This is one of the longest races of the season at 150 miles. And Dumian has made his way to second, now taking a peek on the 0-2 for the lead here. Munoz has managed to lead the first couple of laps, but Carlin Dumian won the, won the last race we had back here in 2015. But he hasn't changed that setup much at all, and... Uh, well, it still certainly seems to be pretty quick. Sebastian Torres looks down low, might make it three wide in to turn number three and four. But Vance Caldwell back to the inside. He might go for the lead himself as the 0-2 might be pushed three wide here by Endumian. Nearly gets into the wall. Some very hard racing up at the front. These guys managed to separate themselves a little bit by just staying kind of single file. Not the case anymore though, is it looks like Vance uh, Caldwell is going to snap the lead away from the O2 with some help from Endumian. Phenomenal pass by that local driver. Has done quite well at some local short tracks such as Thompson, as well as he has some road racing experience in Lime Rock Park. And I think both of those is uh, coming in handy for this race, which is kind of a combination of a oval and a road course race. Hard racing up at the front has resulted in the rest of the pack very quickly crunching down on these guys. Caldwell lost the lead to Endumian. And Dumian then lost the lead back to the pole sitter Munoz. But now it's Sebastian Torres and Pruden's Little John trying to make a run up the outside. The Little Johns came into this race with a lot of confidence, particularly Bill Little John. He looked very strong back in 2015, but ended up being caught up in a accident with just a few laps to go that took him out of contention. Three wide again across the stripe, and Dumian trying to get in front of Caldwell and is able to do so. And Dumian particularly strong on those straightaways as the O2 falls back a couple of positions. For now, it's still Little John and Torres waiting in the wings along with the rest of the pack pretty much. Off of turn number two, that's Chase Marks trying to get a run up the inside. Torres goes to block. Uh, but is not successful. Marks manages to get behind Caldwell. A couple of one-off drivers trying to make their way back uh, into the podium. And Dumian had a six car length lead coming out of turn six, but that's left him a sitting duck with no drafting help at all. And because of that, he's going to get shoved up 
three wide by Vance Caldwell and Prudence Littlejohn. No drafting help there. No one kind of going with him. As Torres gets that thing real sideways into two. And Dumian checks up. That's Grayson Acovito, Kyle Collins, and Small Nozomi. Some of the new entries into the top ten. Along with Patrick Smith, one of the one-off drivers. He's out of Ontario. Little John's going to manage to lead a lap, but it's Chase Marks down to the inside in the number 91 Toyota Camry. First time we've seen Toyota in heart competitions before. Might see him a little bit more if Chase Marks can continue this good run. Michael Harvey dips down to the bottom of the 72 as the number 91 goes up uh, in line with Prudence Little John. Now it's Sebastian Torres in the 68 looking, and everyone's catching these top three in a real hurry because of their battling. Prudence Little John takes a look four wide, push down to the very inside by John Bunnell looking all over the place it's way too early for this kind of racing we're only seven laps in Chase Marks gonna, is going to hold on to the lead though Grayson Acovito started this race 19th but that is no barrier to success here at Waltham he goes to the front and we're only at the beginning of lap number 9 Vance Caldwell gets loose might have been off the bumper of the number 72 but either way that car snapped to the left off of turn one. Good save by the Bob FM machine. This is the 31 goes to the inside of the 68. They will race side by side down into three. Arndt and Voiles have cracked the top ten. Voiles trying to recover after his roll down the front straight at Watkins Glen from the lead, no less. And pretty indicative of the season that Voiles has been having in general. That was his fifth DNF of the year. The only race he's finished, in fact, was Brasstown Ball, and he spun three laps in a row at that track. Finished, Ended up finishing 26th, though. Just looking to get his season started, really, at this point. Three of the one-off drivers racing three wide through turn number four. Smith up into the wall in the number 41. Manages to get that car saved. Sekuli not giving him a whole lot of room there as Fitzwater Sr., the struggles to try and figure out what the hell Patrick Smith's gonna do. Turns out he's fine. Fitzwater Sr. is also fine. Stacks up everyone behind him a little bit, but pretty amazing that everyone's able to keep that uh, their cars going straight after that. After holding the lead for several laps, the Fram's auto filters horseless carriage of Torres falls to the wayside of Grayson Acovito. And he will take over the lead. Little John and Endumian still racing for second with Zayden Davidson and Daniel Voiles now cracking the top five. The tail of the field is no less busy than the front of the field, really. And I imagine that has something to do with probably drivers beginning to get desperate. You want to make your way forward so that you're not stacked up behind too many cars during the pit stop cycle. But... Uh, getting pretty late for some of these guys to make their way forward. Grayson Acovito got swarmed. He's now back in sixth place despite leading the last time around. Bruden's Little John currently holds the lead, but Sebastian Torres pushing John Arndt to the front for the first time today. Zayden Davidson making it three wide, and again, that's going to cause a nice little stack up behind him. Carlin Dumian looks down to the bottom. Zayden Davidson covers that spot and keeps it only three wide. Torres and Little John continue to ignore the lap counter, their own best interests and their safety by uh, racing three wide down into turn one. Shuffling Arndt back to fourth, fifth now, nope, sixth now uh, is the 05 of Arndt. Little John um, will manage to get it from both Torres and Arndt exiting turn two. That's Aiden Davidson and Carlin Dumian and Torres continuing to race three wide down into three. This should be interesting. And Dumian has to give a little bit to avoid getting up into the wall. Torres has to give to not get into Davidson. And so Davidson is now in second place. Now it's Davidson to the front. Nope, might be Torres with some help from Arndt. These top four temporarily pulled away. Rest in peace that gap though with racing like this. Sidney Krasta, Grayson Acovito, and everybody else are going to catch him in a real hurry as Torres is going to clear the nine into turn three. 
Haven't seen a lot of passing down into seven today, but Davidson's going to make it work. The Aussie driver heads to the front. Lap 20, and the driver's beginning to scramble as we're approaching pit stop time. Torres and Art driving by Davidson, who's going to lead it into turn number three. It's Arndt and Torres continuing side by side, but Torres might be able to get it on the outside. No, Arndt still holding strong on the bottom of the racetrack. That'll become the top of the racetrack into turn five and six, though. And Arndt with a very, very good run on the outside, trying to swing and get the momentum up high and carry that onto the straight but the south straight between turn six and seven he'll get it davidson trying to follow Arndt through isn't able to do so though it was torres to the lead then acavito to the lead acavito led the lap now it's torres back to the lead now it's Arndt down to the inside absolutely ridiculous racing at the front now it's little john back in the mix as well might make it three wide with Arndt and torres it's going to be one of these two, Torres and Arndt, getting the lead back. They seem pretty evenly matched. Must be on similar setups. Acovito takes a look for three wide. John, Gam John Gambit in the 44. That's Jim Gambit, actually. Sorry. In the number 44 machine has entered the top five very silently, as has Derek Hamill. Uh, he's up to seventh or eighth, it looks like. Arndt is going to have the lead. Torres, Acovito, and Little John slowing each other down, and because of that, they're way off the back bumper of Arndt exiting turn number six. First set of drivers to come down pit road is led by Torres and Acovito. Arndt continues to lead on the racetrack. Bejenov down. That's Little John down as well. It'll be interesting to see whether early pitting works out in these drivers' favor. Back on the track, the battle's still on. It's Gambit in the 44, pushing the 05 way up to the top of the racetrack. That'll allow Indumian to slip by in the middle line. But more importantly, it's Zayden Davidson to the race lead past Gambit. Hamill, Gambit, and Davidson. Three drivers we really haven't seen up at the front will uh, will lead as we come in to make pit stops, it appears. And here comes the cavalry. Three cars remain on the racetrack. I believe Williams and Harvey are members of that elite group to make it another lap. A little bit of a contact there between Green and Gambit, but that's at least two or three dozen cars on to pit road this lap. Torres and Crasta were the first drivers of the early group to make it out, and it looks like they're going to beat most of the second group drivers out onto the racetrack. Davidson is a driver that Krasta is going to get by. Krasta in particular had a very good stop amongst the first group, came in fourth or fifth out of those guys, came out second, and Krasta is going to overtake Carlin Dumi, and it looks like Gambit, the only driver to make it out in front of the early group in their entirety. Gambit's going to get closed in by Krasta and the rest of the pack without any drafting help, though. Let's see if the late pitting was any help for those three drivers who didn't encounter a lot of traffic and it appears it has been as they merge in just behind those top six. Crasta and Torres caught Gambit into turn number two and working on that for the last half a lap or so and Torres is going to take over the race lead. Now it's Krast at a first position. Bejenov out of nowhere. With a, must have had a great pit stop because now he's battling for the lead as Endumian and Little John. Very close call to an accident there as Torres had to get out of the gas to avoid the wall in turn number two. That car very, very tight uh, in turn two for some reason this time around. Krasta to the inside of Bejenov trying to get that lead back. Bejenov tries to shut the door but the 21. Kind of arrow pushes the 13 up to the outside. Lasavage trying to take advantage of both of them. Um, racing hard. Lasavage started this race in 44th. Quietly ran a race. He was only midfield going into the pits, but he must have had an absolutely amazing pit stop 
uh, because now he's in the lead pack and he's quickly made his way to the front of the lead pack. He hasn't had as much success as his uh, teammate Lucas Knight, but LaSavage might be the star of that Dodge Challenger team this time around. Gambit from fifth at the start of the lap now looks to the high side of the 88. He seems to be making passes work on the top side of the racetrack through turn five and six, and that's exactly what it looks like he's going to do. Great run out of the corner, and he's going to get in front of the 88 who has no drafting help before they hit turn seven, and the inside becomes the preferred line again. Twelve laps remaining in this race. Beijing off down to the inside with a big dive into turn number five. He is going for it. He hasn't won since back in 2015 at least. I can't recall the last time Dejanov won a race actually. He certainly won one in 2014. I think he won several races back in 2014. Since then has not had too too much success. He's forced to fall in behind uh, Jim Gambit, who had a strong run out of turn six, just as he did last time around. Bejanov looks to the bottom of the racetrack. The 88 almost cuts him off there, but he manages to get the pass done on the inside, heading into one. Grayson Acovito did not have a very good pit stop. Ended up outside of the top ten grouping of drivers. He and a sub pack of cars ended up having to draft them down. And they did just that. And since then, Acovito has been on the move just three or four laps ago. He was in 17th place. Now with the most recent pass on Endumian coming to 10 to go, he is in sixth position. He'll be one to watch out for in these final few laps. Lasovich seems to be actually having a little bit of trouble getting by Bejenov. Bejenov is really, really strong in a straight line. Well, Lasovich can seem to put that car wherever he wants it to be and in the corners that car is fantastic but perhaps it's a little bit too high downforce for these long straights as Bejenov pulls away by a car length right there uh, again despite them coming out of the the turn with equal speed and side by side Acavito to third in the number 45 just a lap ago he was sixth now he's up to third and if Lasavage doesn't get a move on in getting by Bejenov I bet Acavito will be challenging the 88 for second in not too long. Acovito very quickly deposits of Lasavich. He is wasting no time in trying to get by Bejenov as he dives to the inside of the number 13 and Lasavich up the outside about five or ten miles an hour faster than anybody else with that high downforce package. Who's gonna lead it into seven? Lasavich pushes the 13 back by the 45 and the 13 goes to the bottom to protect the position from Acovito. Bejanov with a lot of experience, the most experience out of any driver in the field probably in holding off drivers for race victories. He's done it at short tracks, he's done it at road courses, and you can bet that he's done it at super speedways before Acovito closing in on the 45, but the 44 kind of shuts the door on any attempt the 45 could have in getting down to the bottom. Jim Gambit, the rookie in the cornflakes machine, getting a shove from Carlin Dumian, who's come out of nowhere into third position, now might make it into second, and the former race winner here at Waltham might have a shot at Bejenov. Sydney Krast's bumper cams are going to provide, provide some pretty good insight into what these drivers are going through right now. Bejenov tries to block up high. Now he goes to the bottom, trying not to prefer any particular drafting line because he wants to keep both of them at bay as Sidney Krasa way up at the top of the racetrack, pushed up there three wide, in fact, at the moment by Gambit and someone else at the bottom of the track. And Dumian with a run on Bejenov as we come up towards turn five. Bejenov with a bit of a critical mistake the last time around, G let himself get too far in front of Endumian and Gambit who were racing for position back in turn number six. And because of that, he was a sitting duck down the front straight. He will fall to third by the time we hit turn two. Boyle still looking good for his best run of the season, running 14th just behind William Brock, but he gets into the back of him, into turn number five. Lester into the side of him, and the 52 is smoking 
as is the 013, I think. There's a trail of smoke left down there. 52 sticks that thing to the bottom of the racetrack, spewing oil everywhere. A team's probably going to want to fix that car to avoid yet another DNF, but it's it's no use, really. I think, I think Voiles, no matter what, is going to be stuck with a position out of the top 40. Yet another disappointment to add to Voiles' season. Gambit with a charge and then Dumian and Bejenov. No surprise it all goes with them, but might look to the middle line as there is a big gap between the 44 and the 1. Can't make anything out of it, and it's Krasta now into second. Past Bejenov and Dumian forced to fall back into the clutches of La Savage as well, who is so strong in these corners that require the high downforce to kind of keep momentum, and he's up to third. Too big of a gap between Gambit and second place, and because of that, everyone's getting a run up on Gambit. Sidney Krasik goes to try and protect a move from Bejinov, but it's too late. He's gotten to the bottom of him, as has Lasavage, trying to make it three wide. Lasavage has to fall back into line behind the 13, just doesn't quite have the momentum to, uh, to run beside the 13 into the corner. Gambit's going to hold on to the race leads. Krasiv falls back several positions, back to fifth now, behind Carl and Dumian might fall to sixth uh, in the clutches of Grayson Acevedo as Skyla Johnson tries to get Krasta back moving again. Bejenov with a cheeky move to the inside on the 44, exiting turn six. 44 might have a little bit more momentum than him, and he's certainly got more drafting help than him. Heading down into the corner, Lasavage makes it three wide into turn seven, but Bejinov shuts the door, and Bejinov back to the race lead with just a few laps remaining now. Can he continue to hold off the hungry drivers behind him, or will they get the better of him? Grayson Acevedo not pay being patient at all. It is go time, of course, and he might try and get alongside the one. No, has to fall back in line, but he certainly didn't lose any ground from that move. Two and a half laps to go, and, and with Lasavage unable to make a move, or unwilling to make a move on Bejenov, it's Carlin Dumian who's going to go to the bottom of the racetrack and try and overtake the 88 for second. Grayson Acevedo might follow in Dumian through, depending on Carlin Dumian's success rate. The 88's been strong in this corner, but typically he's been on the outside and he just can't get it through the corner with any speed at all, in fact, on the bottom of the racetrack. Slides up the track to his typical line, but behind Carlin Dumian. Less than two laps to go in Carlin Dumian with a move on Bejinov into one. It would be optimal for Bejinov to minimize the impact of this pass by slipping in line behind Indumian, but he is stuck there now. Grayson Acevedo is not going to let that one happen, and in fact, he's going to go for the lead himself with some help from Jim Gambit. He might have the help from Jim for now, but I'm sure if Jim gets the chance, he's going to go for a move on Acevedo if they can get by, but Indumian holding strong on the inside. Bejinov trying to come back on the bottom of the racetrack, as well as Sebastian Torres as re-enter the picture into the top five. And Dumian leads him through turn seven towards the white flag. But he's, he's got a big gap back to Acevedo, but is it too big? The 45 is catching the one in a real hurry. It was Dumian who made a last lap pass on another driver to win back in 2015. Now he's going to have to defend Acevedo and others this final lap, but Acevedo's got the spot before they even hit turn one. That CNA Chrysler is really hauling butts at this moment in time. Savage follows him through in a second. Yep, gets the position from the one. Bejanov stuck behind Endumian, and Jim Gambit slips into third. Acevedo out of turn six has got just a mile or a mile and a half to go, and it's all flat out from here. Gambit with one final charge on the 88, trying to set himself up well for a draft down on the 45, down the front straight, but it looks like it's too little too late. And Lasavage just doesn't seem to have the straight line ability that either of the cars around him has. And so it's going to be Grayson Acevedo exiting the final corner. He went from 19th to 1st to 10th to a bad pit stop and back to the front of the field to win his first career race here in Waltham.
Lasavage with a close second place finish. Couldn't quite replicate his teammates' results, and I'm sure he'll be a little bit disappointed about that. But up 42 positions is not something to scoff at at all. Jim Gambit started 41st and manages to get a career best finish of third. Carl and Dumian finishes fourth after starting the last lap with the race lead. Just couldn't hold those guys off. Prudence Littlejohn manages to get herself back in the top five. Bejenov with a sixth place effort, led the most laps of this race with nine, just goes to show how competitive it was. Colin McGovern, didn't talk about him at all, started 43rd and finishes seventh. Sebastian Torres finishes eighth. It's Skyla Johnson uh, in ninth, and Derek Hamill rounds out the top ten.